what's up, everybody? It's Billy Nash. I'm back. Welcome to my podcast number 26. And I got a special guest today, uh, which I'll reveal shortly. Uh, but I just want to say hello to everybody. And I'm so glad that you're all listening. So uh, I hope everybody had a great Labor Day. I know it was a little sad. I know that uh, we lost a legendary singer uh, and somebody that, you know, when I think of him, I would think of palm trees. I would think of white sandy beaches and blue water. I don't care where I was, whether I was in the you know, nasty cold weather of New Jersey in a cold winter, you know, wherever I was on the planet, when I listened to Margaritaville, I don't care where you are, you got to think it's just happiness, sunshine, you know, blue water and uh, good times. So rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, what a sad weekend. Uh, he passed away on Friday and I'm sure everybody, uh, what I did is had a cheeseburger, uh, uh, you know, in paradise on Friday, uh, in, in his memory. I actually have a kind of cool connection, not directly to Jimmy, um, but I sold a, an incredible property down in the Florida Keys. I've sold some epic, epic properties in the Florida Keys. One that I particularly sold uh, right outside of Key West uh, is now a good friend and client. And uh, he was, you know, you know, pretty close to Jimmy. And uh, Jimmy mentioned uh, his place, Hogfish, in one of his songs and used to go into Hogfish Bar to see, you know, Bobby Mangelli, who's a good friend of mine, a good client. And uh, when I texted Bobby on, on Friday to say I was sorry, you know, you know, you know, definitely a sad day. But uh, he's got some great memories of Jimmy. Jimmy just had a concert uh, in the uh, late spring, um, you know, down in Key West. And Bobby was there and said it was awesome. And he mentioned him by name on stage. And so we're going to miss him. And uh, but every time that you lift a margarita that's salted, I'm sure you'll think of uh, Jimmy Buffett. Rest in peace. And by the way, think about this. Jimmy was not only an amazing, legendary singer and songwriter and storyteller, Jimmy knew how to buy real estate and build a brand, right? And we talk about that all the time. That makes sense. So long-term real estate works. You know, Jimmy, you know, rest in peace, went out with a billion and a half dollar net worth. So, uh, you know, you know, well done, Jimmy. We're going to miss you. And uh, every time I have a cheeseburger, uh, we're going to think of you and hold up a margarita uh, to Jimmy Buffett. So uh, with that, I wanted to introduce my m one of my special guests, my friend, my my loyal friend. Uh, and she is one of the top interior. And by the way, she's so nervous. I'm looking at her right now. She told me her palms are sweating. I'm like, are your palms sweating? It's not like you're walking out into like a stadium with 77,000 people, Annie. You know, it's just us. You know, we're here. We're bullshitting. We're going to talk about business, some fun stuff and how you got to where you are because you're one of the best in the business. And uh, so I wanted to have you on as a special guest. So with that, I want to introduce everybody uh, to my good friend, uh, an interior designer, not only for mansions uh, throughout South Florida, but also yachts. You know, I've seen some of the work she's done, interior design on mega yachts, which is really impressive to me. Uh, and Annie Santuli, welcome to Luxury Real Estate with the one and only me. Well, thank you, Billy <laughs> Nash. That was quite an introduction. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be on your uh, podcast. And I'm honored to uh, be able to work with you so closely and uh, in the past, present and future. Exactly. And Annie, you know, you know, and I, and I appreciate that. And, you know, I've done multiple, multiple transactions together. And the way we had gotten started years ago is, you know, Annie recommended me to a, a job and, you know, maybe you can just touch, you know, maybe, you know, maybe a minute on how, how we first, you know, how, how our first transaction went down. Well, somebody called me and uh, I don't get uh, often, I'm not, uh, I don't have people calling me saying, uh, do you know someone, you know, good real estate agent. And this was many years ago and Billy had just moved here and they called me up and they said, I know you don't usually have these kind of contacts, but I, I, we really got to sell a house within a week or two weeks. And I said, I just met a guy. I got the guy for you. <laughs> and Billy came in. Uh, I did some staging uh, with a couple rooms. We worked closely together and he sold the house in a week. Yeah, actually, we sold the house. Uh, you know, it, well, you know what? It was interesting when Annie went into the, you know, to the property. I learned a lot from her because at that point in my career, I was just starting and um, and, you know, I didn't really uh, understand the process uh, of, of getting these house prepped uh, in a way to neutralize them right? To yeah. neutralize them. Mm -hmm. So a buyer can see, and Annie did such an amazing job that we ended up selling it to someone that looked at photos a year prior 
and didn't realize it was the same house. And this happened to be the chairman of a Fortune 500 company. And he said, oh my God. He goes, I had no idea this was the same house. So that was really awesome. And then that's led to many, many transactions over the last seven or eight years. And Annie's been very loyal to me and I've been very loyal to Annie. But at the end of the day, she does a wonderful job. So Annie, the people that are listening, you know, some people are very familiar with interior design, interior decorating, uh, staging. And I know that you do both uh, 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 epic properties, uh, beautiful townhouses on Palm Beach Island, all the way down through Miami. But you also uh, have have done things for, you know, for yachts. So is there any difference in the style of what you do when you're doing a yacht versus when you're doing a mansion? Like what, how does your mind think? Well, that was a, such a crazy story. I was working for this gentleman in Admiral's uh, Cove and, uh, you know, I had never done a yacht before. And he called me one day and he was a man of few words. And he said, I need to see you today. So I said, okay. He said, come meet me and I'm going to take you somewhere. So I get in the car. He's silent all the way. He takes me to Rivovich. He has a 150 foot gutted yacht. He takes me in the yacht. He walks me around, says not a word. I get in the car and he goes, okay. I said, so Bob, what, what's my role in this? He said, do it. So I said, but Bob, I have to be honest with you. I've never done a yacht. He said, you're a quick study. Do it. He said, I just have one request. You get it done in six months. I need this yacht because I am so done with it. I'm selling it. And, and I actually saw the yacht at the yacht show, you know, at the, in, the, in the Palm Beach Yacht Show, which is one of the best in the country. And uh, it was absolutely beautiful. And I still remember the stars on the carpet. Yeah, yeah. And it was so nautical, but it had this, you know, like very, you know, royal feeling yes. and presidential feeling to it with the mahogany and the designs. And it was absolutely incredible. So, you know, when I think of interior design before you and I had met and, you know, again, I, you know, I was coming out of New York and wall street and, you know, wasn't selling luxury real estate at that point, you know, I, I didn't realize how much goes into the process of when you get a job, because in our business and people that are listening will probably get, you know, understand this. A lot of times, you know, you see the, you know, you see the pretty photos, you know, Annie's product, you know, and, and Annie's jobs have been on the cover of Architectural Digest and all these magazines throughout the country. I've had photos that are on the cover of DuPont Registry. So people see all the beautiful finished product and we make it look easy, but they don't realize how much grind and grit goes into those projects. So um, tell me a little bit about how it works you know, for, on, on your side, because we all see the pretty product when it's done. Right. So how do you start? Like, I know you do like, like, um, you know, you do a uh, room, you know, you're, you're measuring and you're, you know, you're, you're playing a role of almost like a architect, you know, an architect. Well, well, first what I do when I get a job, I go to the house and I literally sit there for probably three, four five hours. And I try to just get the feeling of the house. Like it's my house. And I look around and I walk around and I sit around and I just, I'm, I'm, my mind is going. And I kind of start eating and drinking and sleeping this job. And that could be five jobs. I mean, I'm a boutique firm. So you hire me, you get me. I've got the greatest people, but I'm to a total control freak. So after that, the first thing I do is I bring my space planner into the house. We measure the whole house. Even if there were measurements before, we measure every nook and cranny. Uh, we start working together to start coming up with a plan of many different options of types of furniture. And then I hit the ball running. I go to my furniture showroom. I work with uh, a designer and the buyer who, uh, from New York who um, has been in this business for years. She's amazing. We put together a presentation uh, shop in the 60,000 square foot showroom to the trade only, get a presentation ready for the client. The client comes in, start with the uh, floor plans, different um, layouts, then go to the furniture, then go to the fabrics, and we knock it out in one, two, or three days, depending on the client, how quick they can make the decisions. And, and so that's very similar to real estate when you're putting together an amazing 
luxury listing presentation because I too, as well, want to go in and feel the property, you know, get the essence of what it is, yes. be able to tell the story, yes. create, you know, create the visuals of what that lifestyle could mean for that potential buyer to relay that to them. So it's very similar in, in, in that sense. Have you ever walked into a property where you're like, oh my God, this is a disaster and, and I don't know where to start? Um, I walk into a lot of properties and say, this is a disaster Yeah, <laughs> because most of them, honestly, they've got the bones, but they are, you know, they, they're redos. So besides the furniture presentation, I'm also doing construction. So first I go in with my contractor. I work with this amazing guy for many years. We're totally in sync. Um, I, we, we get the client prices. I start picking out materials with the client. I, I try to have my client very involved. And most of my clients are obviously, um, there's several clients that say that they're involved, but it, they're totally whatever I say. And there's other clients that, you know, have more hands on, more hands on and have more opinions. So the first thing really to do is get involved in the construction, because even before I do the presentation for furniture, I have to have all my materials picked. You know, it's not just, oh, I'm going to pick chairs and fabrics. It's working around all the materials in the house. So I need all my, oh, my flooring. I need my kitchen, you know, cabinets. I need my bathroom cabinets. I need countertops. So you know, that's where I begin first, really, even before the furniture presentation. So I, you know, again, I'm a, a successful business is not just you. So I know what I know. I know what I don't know, but I've got the best people who know what I don't know. And I, and I let them go with it. I mean, I'm totally involved with that aspect, but I also don't micromanage in the sense of allowing them to be able to speak when we're in the room with the client. I don't take total control of that. Mm -hmm. I want, I want each one to talk about what they know. What their specialty is. Exactly. And we've talked about this on previous podcasts, surround yourself with the team that can get you to the finish line. You know, everybody has a specialty. Everybody plays a role in the process and it works out for the client. The client doesn't want to meet somebody that knows everything about everyone right? They want to be surrounded by the leader of the pack and what their team brings to the table to help facilitate, you you know, you know, the job opportunity. So, you know, when, when, when we think about what's happened here in the last few years, there's been a crazy, crazy uh, influx of buyers from all over the country, Uh, California, New York, New Jersey, uh, Illinois, uh, I mean, you name it, they're coming to Florida and the demand was incredible and that demand is still there. However, you know, you know, uh, uh, the velocity has, has, has slowed up tremendously. Uh, deals are getting done. Big deals are getting done. Um, but my question to you is the supply chain actually affected you know, you know, how these jobs, you know, for even, for, you know, for clients that, you know, you know, in, you know, in, in my, on my side of the ledger, uh, it was affected. How did the supply chain affect you during those two years of craziness? Was it harder to get product? I mean, what was the expectations that you were setting for clients? How did you work through those issues over the last couple of years? Because I was affected. I know a lot of, you know, I can't get, you know, I had a client say, I can't get a wolf oven for two fucking years. Do you know what I mean? Like what's going on? You know, so how did that affect you and how did you handle it? Because being able to handle crisis uh, or, 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 or things that, you know, is very important. I think, I think one of my um, great attributes is being transparent. So before I even take a job, you know, I'm also interviewing the client to make sure that they understand exactly what I'm saying, that furniture can take eight to 10 to 12 months. I'm not telling them it's two or three months. I'm totally transparent. So once at the very beginning of the job, if you're honest with people and you do what you say and you say what you do, 99% of people are very understanding. It's when you don't tell them the the real deal. Uh, Yes, as far as appliances and and all of those things, there was a lot of issues, but like you said, you've got to be able to maneuver and take the right turns uh, when, when you're having issues. It's not just, it's not all, everybody thinks decorating is, oh, it's so easy and so 
you know, there's a lot, obviously it's a big business behind the scenes. So like my contractor, when we couldn't get the sub zeros because they were taking 14 months, we would either, hopefully they had a refrigerator in the house that we would work, or, you know, we would do our cabinets and we'd be able to give them the, or that, that refrigerator or loan them a refrigerator. We always found a way to make it work even if they didn't have that exact product then and there. So I honestly, I really wasn't very affected by it because I made it work mm -hmm. and, and people were very understanding. And, and what is the difference, you know, between a real designer and someone that just puts stuff in a home for photographs for, you know, like I see it some, 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 you know, some stages will throw a couple of blankets, you know, put a vase with some flowers and there's a, and I think there's a difference between an actual real designer and, 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 and some of those things that I see on Instagram and those kind of, you know, just kind of for, you know, a new listing to throw up some, right. you know, a couple things in the house. And then it's, it's now, you know, you're considered a designer. Right. What's the difference? Well, I'm actually a decorator slash designer. Um, you've, and so what I do is uh, I work with architects who I don't do the drawings. I'm not that a designer who does the architectural drawings. I work with the engineers and architects and, and everybody for construction. And then I do all the decorating. Um, a, what you're talking about is a stager. So that's somebody who has a warehouse full of furniture. And for each job, when they get called uh, to sell a house, they stage furniture that somebody rents out. So even when we did the first house together, I didn't really stage that house. I really, the people, I furnished that bedroom. I furnished the rooms. They bought the furnishings. They bought, I did the window treatments. So it was all real stuff. It wasn't just temporary stuff. Got it. Got it. So, so really I get calls for staging all the time, but I don't do that because that's, you, you need a warehouse, you need furniture. To, to temporarily loan to somebody. Mm -hmm. And that helps real estate agents sell a house because it's not an empty house yep. because people can't visualize. So now with staging furniture, when they do that, I'm sure that you, you've done it. It's very helpful because people could sort of delineate the rooms and they don't get so overwhelmed. Sometimes when they walk in this empty house, even though they know they Agreed. have to furnish, they're like, oh my God, what is this going to cost me? How yeah. am I going to do it? Who am I hiring? You know, I so, agree. so I like to get in there. Like sometimes you've taken me in there to sell some houses just to sort of point out to people, this is how this can be done. It doesn't mean necessarily they're going to hire me or I know up front they're going to hire me, but it's just to help the real estate agents out mm -hmm. to say, you know, don't get so overwhelmed. This is what we could do. We can move this wall. We can do that, you know, whatever it may be. So how do you, you know, and when you're, you know, you've been in this business for a long time, if you had to give somebody advice that's, you know, growing their, you know, growing their practice and then they're dedicated to growing their brand and how important is that to you and your business, you know, branding and, in in uh, uh, you know, in, you know, in the luxury real estate business, right. Because it's kind of what you're, you know, what you're doing. Um, what would be some, you know, some advice that you can give somebody that, you know, that's building a business, you know, about their brand, about, you, you know, you know, the grind and what would be some, some, well, some words of wisdom? I think it's important. One of the things is I think my success also is that I love what I do. And I think it's important to have relation, your relationship with the client is first and foremost, you're going to, you're like married to them for a very long time. So what I would, st when I first started my business and I knew I loved it and I knew I really wanted it as a, as a career, um, I took anything, you know, I was not, you know, t whatever it may be, the smallest job, slowly but surely uh, you get this and that and word of mouth and you cultivate a clientele and a rapport that now you're getting referrals. And, you know, a lot of it is luck but a lot of it is passion and being able to really connect with people because that's, you know, 10 designers could go, uh, can go on an interview and who's really going to get that job if they're all talented, that connection, it's like life, you know, it's, it's the connection that people want. They it's want, a people business, no matter what. And you want to do business with people you like. Yes, exactly. So uh, my, my first thing that I would say, you got to just, you know, grind, go under the grind and take any job you can and just keep, keep doing that. And then eventually, hopefully, um, things change and like in, in any business, you've worked hard, you've had a little bit of luck, you met the right people, you knew the right people, whatever that may be. And sl slowly but surely, um, things happen for you. For me, I also wanted a brand. I didn't just want to do, you know, I want a house. 
I wanted, once my business started getting successful, I, or I hired a marketing girl. Uh, she's amazing. You know, now, now she started branding me, redoing my website and getting me in magazines. And, you know, one thing leads to another. And now, you know, all of a sudden I'm number one on Google and, you know, but it took years. And you use house. Uh, house, house, uh, isn't like it used to be. Okay. But, so it changed. I remember a while ago you used you uh, yes, so many I'm still on there. And, I'm yeah. still actually, I'm number one, but now I'm number two because you could pay to be number one. Got so, it, got it, got it. But I do have 95 <laughs> reviews and you know, again, people Google. So all of a sudden there's house, there's this magazine, there's architectural digest, there's modern luxury. Uh, they just did a spread on me and it just, one thing leads to another. And eventually, you know, it's like anything else, you know, so, there's, so I had the privilege of um, going over to see a property that Annie Lee recently d uh, did that uh, was in, well, I think it was going in Architectural Digest. They were there taking Well, we're photos. trying to get it into modern luxury. I'm crossing <clears throat> my fingers. <laughs> and it probably will get there. I was there when they were doing the photo shoot. Annie invited me over to kind of get a sneak peek of this property uh, on Palm Beach Island. And it is incredibly beautiful. If you go to my Instagram, Nash.Billy, I did a, a video uh, right before I left for Europe in the summer. And uh, I mean, it's so hard to capture how incredibly awesome of a job she did, you know, in like 30 seconds, but it was incredible. I walked into the koi pond, you know, to this incredible wall with beautiful uh, blue butterflies and flowers. And it was just so, you know, over the top, uh, incredibly luxurious. And as I walked through the property, I got that feeling of as if I was in like a Chanel, uh, 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 like, like I felt like I was in Chanel, Gucci, all wrapped in one. And it was just incredible. Um, so what, what brands do you use Annie in these properties? Cause I remember one room had like a Chanel and had like, it, it was incredible. It was one of the bedrooms. I mean, I saw like a Gucci, like just great stuff. So how do you, how do you come up with, you just go in there and go like, Oh my God, this is going to be the Gucci room. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, it was like a gigantic Annie Santuli closet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about a lot of nice stuff. <laughs> you know, that's, it's so hard to, it's so hard to put your finger on that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It just evolves. These people, this job was a dream because at the very beginning, you know, they, the, the cutest thing was they, I hadn't met them, but they hired me. They said, go see the house. I went in and it was, it was a townhouse on the ocean, but I felt like it was sort of Malibu meets the Hamptons, but it was a wreck. And there was these wood on the walls, like yachts and like- And every penny of 15 million now that Danny's done with it. Yeah. You know, I maybe mean, 20. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. And I called, I called the owner and, and, you know, I, 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 they said, what do you think? So I said, well, let me tell you the good news. And they said, what? I said, it's an amazing piece of property. It's like Malibu meets the Hamptons. And he's, he's got this really cool sense of humor, very dry. And he said, okay, Annie, what's the bad news? I said, the bad news is you got to get rid of all that wood. I felt like I was in a casket. Yeah. So he said, but Annie, I thought I liked the wood. I said, you don't like the wood. And that started the whole amazing relationship. And the great thing about them was that at the beginning, they said, you know, I know as a creative person, you don't think of everything at the beginning. And it was a big construction job besides decorating. And they said, so come to us. If, if as you go along, you you come up with something else that you think would be fabulous. So that really gave me the impetus to my, my God, my brain never stops. So when you said, yes, I had some Chanel pictures, I, I, it, it, just it, just, it just flows. Yeah, I, I just great. find it. Those are just unique pieces, the artwork, you know, it's gorgeous artwork, you know, sculptures, beautiful sculptures, you know, it just, it's hard to, to put your finger on that. You thought of that at the beginning of the job. I sold it, a property that Annie referred to me a few years ago. And uh, the, I remember, and I still remember, I, I remember specific pieces in these properties that I still stand out in my, you know, in my mind. Um, the big armoire kind of open bar that was made out of, it looked like, it, what was that made out of? I mean. It's just it, a beautiful veneer wood. It was that, just spectacular. You know, and the, with these outrageous handles. It was and crazy. With burled kind of uh, undertones. Beautiful, and, beautiful stuff. So if anybody is looking to, to, to get some ideas and get creative or is looking for one of the top in interior designers, you know, in South Florida, you know, you can always find Annie Santuli uh, as what your, you know, your go-to. Um, but with that, Annie, I wanted to thank you. I, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, you and I've been friends for a long time. We've done a lot of deals together and I appreciate your loyalty. And uh, I will always, you know, you always be first on my list. And uh, 
Thank you so much. And if there's anything that you could say, Annie, you know, to leave the people that are listening of just some advice, you know, that are building a business or have a business need to be recharged or they're thinking about branding, you know, in, 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 in 30 seconds, what would that advice be to them? You just got to be excited. You got to be excited about what's going to happen next. You've got to always be thinking. You you can't sit back on your laurels. You've got to always say, you know, what what's my next step? What your brain's got to always be going to to figure out what if, what if, what if this doesn't go the way I want? What if this does go the way I want? You know, what's going to be my next step? So I think that the best advice is you got to be excited. You've got to put yourself out there and you've got to really say I know I could do this, even though you might not have the most experience. That's perfect. That's great advice. And Annie, how do people find you? I mean, I know where to find you, but how does anybody <laughs> listen? How, how do they find you if they just have a job to, for you? Just go to AnnieSantulliDesigns.com. Perfect. And with that, thank you everybody for thank this. Thank you, Billy. You're welcome. Thank you, Annie, for coming on. And uh, by the way, I was, Annie was in the parking lot and she was, I was going in circles and I was beeping behind her. She goes, who's this guy in a Range Rover <laughs> beeping at me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she found Pop Populi where we're here and doing the podcast. So it's all good. But uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to episode 27 with my special guest, Annie Santulli. Uh, keep doing deals. I love you. Share this with your friends. Listen to it on uh, on Apple Podcast. Share it anywhere you listen to it. Give me a good rating. Let's get, you know, let's have some fun. Get deals done. I love you all. And I'll talk to you next week. Billy Nash. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs>